Hi, everybody. This is Dave Vellante of Wikibon.org, and we're here at Wikibon headquarters. This is theCUBE. Adam Fuchs here. Adam spent the better part of a decade at the NSA, and if you're an application designer and a big data practitioner, he's going to share with you some of the lessons that he learned there. Adam, welcome. Thanks, Dave. Good to be here. Yeah, so I've broken out some of my best handwriting to share with you some of these lessons learned, and, and I've got four of them today. All right, we're going to talk about uh, starting small but designing for scalability. We're going to talk about uh, schemas and, and uh, ontology development. Uh, we're going to talk about application building blocks and, and discovery analytics. Uh, and we're going to talk a little bit about data-centric security. So I'll just start out with a little discussion of uh, adoption curves uh, from an application developer's perspective. Uh, so I've worked on, at the National Security Agency, dozens of uh, infrastructure components, applications, uh, and really I've seen a variety of approaches taken. Uh, some of those have to do with, you know, we, we would pick you know, a huge set of requirements, try to throw those into one application. Uh, that results in you know, a huge amount of time spent building an application. Maybe you're designing for scalability from the start, but you're also trying to bite off way too much. Uh, so the adoption curve that you might see from that type of approach would be a huge amount of time spent. Uh, you get to market at the end of that time, and then your growth uh, follows from that point. Uh, a lot of people have shifted more towards a prototyping type effort where they might do uh, operational prototypes. One of the concepts there is try to get the application to market very quickly. Right? So here we've drawn a second curve where <clears throat> the application uh, you know, will we'll design it for a small scalability, pick off a very small set of uh, application requirements, build the app for that, It'll reach a certain point, we'll redesign for scalability, grow from there, redesign from scalability, uh, grow from there. You know, and there's, there are these levels, but to cross those tiers, there's a, a large amount of remodeling effort. But we did get to market quickly, and we got some early insight on how that application might be useful. Uh, a third curve, which is one of the things that we're trying to support with, with Squirrel, is to start small, but design from the beginning for scalability. Right, so a lot of the Hadoop ecosystem and the, the components in that are really designed to give a, a prototyping type capability where uh, you can bring that to market very quickly, but it also scale up. Right? It, all of the, the elements that you throw into that original application design are designed for, for scalability from the ground up. Right? And that's, that's a much nicer curve. You don't have to you know, take your system offline for a while to scale up to the next tier. Uh, instead, you can just keep it running, add more boxes, scale horizontally, uh, bring in a lot of elasticity. Uh, so that's a very nice uh, lesson learned where you know, a lot of the, the national security agencies' applications are shifting more towards that design paradigm. Uh, another concept I want to explore today is the, uh, the concept of data modeling. Uh, and there are sort of two extremes in that space that we see a lot of, of uh, application developers tending towards. Uh, one of the extremes is to use a very flat schema. Right? And this might be exemplified by people throwing data into HDFS and running MapReduce on top of it as, in its raw form. Uh, for some applications, that's OK. You know, if the application uh, uses data that really doesn't have a, a very complex schema associated with it, that'll get you a long way. Um, there's the other extreme, though, which is for applications that deal with data that has a lot of join points, a lot of complexity in the data, uh, it's nice to have a much more highly modeled form of the data. Right? So if we consider these two extremes from an application development perspective, you know, there's, there's a lot of uh, complexity that shows up in the application when we're dealing with unstructured data. Uh, a lot less complexity shows up when we're dealing with a more structured approach. Right, so we actually have a complexity curve that looks something like that. Uh, there's a flip side of this as well, though. Right, one of the things that is nice about flat schemas is you can bring data in very quickly. Right, and you can have it uh, available for application development before you go through a large modeling process to bring that data in. Right, so we have a second complexity curve, which is essentially the ETL, or the data modeling curve. Right, so you might think of this as the amount of time that it takes uh, to model the data. Certainly, if we're throwing it into flat files, we can just throw it in. It's, it's very quick. Uh, you know, there's some small structure that we can bring with other techniques. 
But if we go to this complete ontology uh, approach, you know, it could be months or even years before we get a, mo a model that really handles all of the data that we have. Uh, and even then, as we bring in new data sets, we may have to remodel, you know, we may have to uh, totally reorganize that ontology to handle the new complexities that new data brings. Uh, so what we're trying to support with Squirrel is a, a middle-of-the-road approach, you know, where uh, you know, it's not totally flat. You know, it's supporting some higher-level application concepts, but we can also bring in data very quickly. And this is sort of more of an ELT approach rather than ETL, uh, where uh, you know, we bring in the data quickly, understand it using the tools that we have uh, for doing big data analysis, and then transform it later on as we understand it more. Right, so that's, that schema refinement cycle is an iterative schema refinement cycle. Uh, and inside of Squirrel and inside of Accumula, we're building a lot of tools to support that, you know, whether it's through flexible schemas to bring it in, or through schema statistics to learn about the schema that actually exists in there, uh, or through bulk transformation tools that give us high throughput for transforming data you know, and, and support that type of activity. Uh, that iterative refinement cycle is, is very key uh, for bringing applications to market very quickly. Uh, a third concept that I want to explore is this concept of discovery analytics as application building blocks. All right, so the space where I see a lot of innovation in government uh, spaces as well as in commercial spaces is in that application development. Uh, so you might think of an overall application for risk analysis or fraud detection or cybersecurity, whether it's intrusion detection or forensic analysis. Those are all a suite of applications, right? There's no single application for any of those use cases that covers everything. So the more applications that we can develop, the faster we can innovate and the faster we can evolve uh, to uh, support a broader set of uh, scenarios, a broader set of applications and use cases. Uh, in order to do that with uh, good scalability and with good security, it's necessary really to have a set of building blocks on top of which to build those applications. Right? Nobody goes out and, and builds an application end to end from you know, the, the bytes uh, that they put on disk all the way up through the visualization layer that's human digestible. There's always layers in between. Uh, at Squirrel, what we think is the right layer to build applications on top of is something we call discovery analytics. Right? And this, this came out of uh, years of, of efforts in building lots of different applications at NSA. Uh, but we think that some of the things that, that show up in that space are uh, things like universal search, where it's structured and unstructured data using languages that people are familiar with, like Lucene. Uh, also in that space, uh, basic statistics, right? aggregations that are parallelized across the cluster, uh, document structures, right? building models on the time using uh, uh, over time online uh, using hierarchical document structures and using graph structures. Uh, those things all fit into this discovery analytics layer. You know, and if we can build those in a generic way such that they're reusable at these higher level applications, then what we can do is fi uh, figure out and solve the scalability and security problems inside of that discovery analytics layer so that the cost of building applications on top of it uh, you know, is, is very small, or is significantly smaller at least. Uh, so this layer down here, uh, this is really where Squirrel fits. Right? And our product, Squirrel Enterprise, uh, encapsulates you know, that whole layer up through the databasing, up through the indexing, uh, the organizations of data, uh, you know, up through that discovery analytics layer, exposing things at the right, uh, in the right API that's useful for application development. So uh, along all of these concerns, uh, you know, coming from NSA, security is always a big concern. So at NSA, all of the applications that we developed had a multi-level security concern of, of some level, right? Uh, so that generally comes out of the, the concept of uh, privacy policies or legal restrictions on how data can be used. You know, and as, as you get into the, the big data, big application space, uh, you really run across more and more of those types of uh, restrictions on how data can be used. Some of those com things come from like Sarbanes-Oxley or HIPAA restrictions on data usage. Uh, some of them come from uh, internal privacy policies or uh, information sharing between different organizations. Uh, we're seeing 
not only in the government space, but also in commercial spaces, more and more of those data restrictions coming into place. Uh, the traditional approach to dealing with complex data restrictions is to put some business logic into the application space. Right? And that's, that's bad for a couple of reasons. One is that it complicates the application. So bringing an application to market with, with all of those security concerns built into it is a longer process. Right? It may take you months instead of hours to build that application with all those security concerns. Not only that, but this is a point of vulnerability. Right? The more times you implement complex security uh, requirements, the more times you're going to get it wrong. Right? So if we can push that down into the infrastructure layer and get it right uh, in, that, in that one place, uh, you know, we've, we've increased our security and we've increased innovation through cheaper application development. The way we do that inside of Accumulo and inside of Squirrel is through a concept called data-centric security. And for that, uh, really data carries around with it some aspect of uh, provenance, which is really defines how it can be used when coupled with a, a set of uh, policies, security policies. Uh, so S Squirrel and Accumulo implement that through a, a concept called cell level security. And inside of Squirrel and inside of Accumulo, every key value pair you know, that represents those higher level concepts like structured documents, uh, graphs, indexes, each of those things boils down to key value pairs which are tagged with visibility labels. And that data-centric security concept allows us to separate the modeling of security from the modeling of the application. So exposed at that discovery analytics layer uh, you know, are a series of, of, uh, you know, of methods that are used to, to uh, build those, uh, to model the applications. Each of them has that security built into it from the core. Right? So that, that drastically de decreases that cost of building security and drastically increases the, uh, the efficacy of that security. All right, so those are the, the four uh, basic lessons learned over my decade of experience at NSA. Right? So, so we follow through here. It was start small but designed for scale, iterative schema refinement, discovery analytics as big app building blocks, and data-centric security throughout. Excellent, Adam, thanks very much. Really appreciate you sharing your deep knowledge uh, with the Wikibon and SiliconANGLE communities. So if you want more information on, on this and, and other advice, go to squirrel.com, it's S-Q-R-R-L.com, and also check out youtube.com slash siliconangle for other videos like this. Go to siliconangle.com for all the news, and check out wikibon.org for all the research. Thanks for watching, everybody. We'll see you next time. All right. Thanks, Dave.